a lot of blood already in the ground stones and he was weak but still he carried will will power and that is what we are we are so different from all the creatures on this in this universe this planet is because we have the free will the free will is a source of evil or source of good for human being it's just a choice like today it's it's a this is an amazing thing still that we see some of our young Catholics, okay? They still are for abortion. Young Catholics. The will, the will to kill. The will to kill yourself, the will to kill others. You, if you kill yourself, you're able to kill your children. How about killing yourself and others? It's easy. Yeah. The most precious, the most sacred of all beings is, are the babies. And you were willing to kill that one. Mother Teresa said, the, the poorest country in the world are the countries that allow abortion. And she spoke to Clinton and Hillary, you know that? On her prayer morning, you know? She said, she said, do that directly. Remember that? How could you do that? And so, this is the will. The will to go against God. Last, uh, last week I mentioned about, do you remember the ultimate enemy of God. Who is the ultimate enemy of God? What is the ultimate enemy of God? Is it the devil? Sin. Well, sin is the ultimate, but what is sin? By nature, in essence, what is the, what stands in the middle, at the center of the word I, S-I-N? What is in the middle of the word sin? I. The ego. The ultimate enemy of humankind, humanity, is God himself. The ultimate enemy of our free will or our our ego is God Himself. So we thought we we're gonna fight against the world and then against uh, the flesh and then against the you know the devil. But in fact, we have to fight against ourselves, submit ourselves to the Almighty God. That is heaven. Submit ourselves, and how are we going to do that? Simply by submitting ourselves to the Holy Name. A lot of people do not understand this power of the holy name, the most holy name. This name created everything and everyone, visible and invisible. And in this holy name, and then St. Paul said, do whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord, remember? Do it in the name of the Lord. Do we do that? So imagine when you get angry. I, get, uh, I am angry in the name of the Lord. Can you be angry? Can you continue to be angry? I hate, I hate in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Does it make sense? Can you hate in the name of the Lord? So, suppose, you know, you have that hatred, that feeling, and you have the name of the Lord, immediately either your hatred goes or the name of the Lord goes. Do everything, in the, think in the name of the Lord, speak in the name of the Lord, okay? Walk in the name of the Lord, love in the name of the Lord, give in the name of the Lord, everything we do in the name of the Lord. Healing comes from the name of the Lord. It's not like my faith. Remember, we said and we spoke about this. This is my faith. I have a strong faith. You have weak faith. Those people have strong faith. That's why they can speak in tongue. And I have weak faith, so I cannot speak in tongue. That's not that. It's not true. Don't you remember when uh, Peter was in in Jerusalem? He was uh, he was about to have a siesta, and then. Suddenly he had this vision, the dream, a nightmare. And the Lord, you know, threw down from heaven these, uh, this uh, blanket of all kind of early animals. And the Lord said, slaughter them and eat them. And Peter said, no, they're dirty, I cannot eat, I'm a choose, you know, I cannot eat these dirty things. And then, and then he fell asleep again, and the same dream, you know, recurred. Right? Same thing. The Lord said, slaughter them and eat them. I said, I cannot eat them. I woke up, somebody came to, to his place and said, Oh, someone wants you to come and baptize them. He went to the house of Cornelius. You know the story? Cornelius, a Roman. All the family there. Then Peter came in and everybody was speaking in tongue before they were baptized in the Holy Spirit and with water in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They were already speaking in tongue. Somebody taught them. Did they have faith? The Holy Spirit took over them already. 
And the Holy Spirit only told Cornelius that there's a name by uh, a person by the name of Cephas. Go and ask him. He's going to come and he's going to baptize you. And Peter said, okay, they already, you know, they already have the Holy Spirit just like we did, you know, when, when the, at Pentecost. We have the, exactly the same thing. And they already have it. And they are not Christian yet. What's going on? What's wrong? They were not even Christian yet. And they have the, the same Holy Spirit as us. So we make them Christian. <coughs> So, the Holy Spirit works the way He likes to work, you know. We are not in charge of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people thought, oh, I'm going to speak in tongue and I can control the Holy Spirit and I can call down the Holy Spirit anytime I like. That means that you are the God of the Holy, you know, the third person of the Holy Trinity. That is wrong. God is in charge of us, not me in charge of God. And that, that, you know, that kind of almost like on the borderline of heresies, and when I, I can say this kind of uh, spell, and I can control this spirit and that spirit, so we speak in tongue and we can, can control the Holy Spirit, because we can teach it. No, the Holy Spirit comes into us and He speaks. Okay, Emmy? <coughs> You can go play somewhere, okay? You can play. <coughs> not, not here, okay? Okay, I'll pray when, when I'm done. I'll watch that, okay? You can go there and play, play, uh, play in there, okay? So uh, people will be praying for you very soon, okay? Go in there. I'll get some, some toys for you, okay? So, it is in the name of Jesus Christ. The one thing we have, we have access to, is the name of Jesus Christ. We don't use His name. We go after or some kind of a strange thing. And uh, Saint Paul said, you know, it's uh, the the speak the tongue. The speaking in tongue is about edifying yourself or purging yourself because I'm unclean, like the family of Cornelius. They were unclean, so the Spirit came to them and cleansed them. It is not that I'm better, I'm holier than anybody else. It's only because I'm filthy. That's why I, I, I see this a lot you know, through, throughout my life. Um, when, when the Holy Spirit came in 1992, and in the middle of the night, and He came in in such a way that you cannot control. You open yourself once, you yield yourself, you surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit. He comes in, and suddenly He took over the whole body, mind, spirit, body, everything. And then he turns your whole body into like this very hot, heated, you know, the body just on fire. And suddenly it turns cold and then hot and cold. I know when you do that, you're, you know, some, something is cleansing you. The Holy Spirit comes that way. And I have no control. And if I'm dirty, the Holy Spirit is going to come. When you yield yourself, He's going to come and He's going to cleanse you. In the middle of the night, you're sleeping and He just comes. And if you're... Uh, you work, you work and work and work and you feel exhausted. Okay, you work 24-7. And he comes immediately within 20 minutes, you come back refreshed. And you come back just like 20 minutes, like 24 hours of rest. That's what the Holy Spirit, Spirit does. But he's in charge, not me. Okay? Now, how are we going to invite the Holy Spirit to come? In the name of Jesus Christ. That we have access. The Holy Spirit has to have access into us, in us, to us. I have to have access here. But we have access to the name of Jesus Christ anywhere, anytime. Why don't we use the name of the Lord? Not in vain, but in praise, in worship, in adoration. In the name of Jesus, suppose. And I have been teaching this again and again, remember that technology, the OK technology. If you can say OK, then you are? If you can say OK, then you are? OK. If I can say OK, then I am OK. It's easy. OK, you're driving on the road, OK? A lot of people are getting enraged because of the traffic, and you breathe in. You say, oh, and you say, okay, that's it. Because I can say, okay, let go. Remember that one? So, 
the OK technology once again. Those who do not know what OK technology is, uh, please raise your hand. <laughs> OK technology, the OK technology. You don't know the OK technology? Ah, you said that. Yes, I do. Yeah. I know. You don't remember that one, right? You don't remember that. You don't know the OK technology. You know the OK technology? You haven't spoken with your mother, your mom. Yeah. The OK technology. Okay. I'm going to do it again because this is we use the name of the Lord in praise and for evangelization. Oh, you see the Holy Eucharist? Round, oh. You see everything, you know, around, you see the O. O is from the Greek letter, uh, alphabet, Omega, the ultimate. Okay? K, the calf in Hebrew is, which is um, like the K, okay, but it, it looks like the palm of your hand, which means a blessing. Potential and actual blessing. Okay? So it means the ultimate blessing. The Father is the Alpha, the Son is the Omega, the Holy Spirit is a blessing. Okay? And I have been studying on this, the breath of God, the name of God, the presence of God, for four years, just keep thinking on one thing, one thought, one idea for a long time. And doing a lot of research in a book called Fulo Kilo Kalia. Okay? Mm. So this is a teaching of the early church's father regarding the prayer, Jesus' prayer, calling on the name of the Lord, Jesus' prayer. Okay. I'm going to take somebody to be an example and I teach again so you can know, you know how I teach and you can teach others. Okay? So now I want to have a cup of coffee. You remember this one? I did not teach. Now, how many days uh, the Lord created the universe. How many days? Six, Six days. He took a whole day to create a human being, mankind, yeah. humankind. Okay, five days, the whole thing, everything, and then he took a whole day to create man and woman. In okay, the sixth day, what did he do on the seventh day? Rest. Mm -hmm. Rest. Okay, very good. So imagine, always remember, Sabbath, the seventh day, the day that God rests. Okay, the question is, is where does God rest? Where does God Where rest? Does? Look at this. Now, we have the prime number or the divine number. Once again, I teach this again, and you know the lesson, and you can teach other people mm -hmm. again. Prime numbers are God number, divine numbers, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, all those who can divide by one and themselves alone. Okay? Uh, you cannot divide it evenly. So, you see, God has sign his name in our body. The head, seven portals into the soul. Two eyes, two nose, two ears, and one mouth. Seven. Mm -hmm. The body, head, neck, arm, body, thigh, calf, and feet. Seven. Why? I don't know why. Why is it uh, there, there are seven days in a week? I don't know why, but that's the way it is. Because that's the way it is, how we are made of. Seven. And on the seventh day, God rest. Where does God rest? In our self. In us. Again, if you want to teach, tell everybody, St. Alphonsus Liguri, the founder of the Redemptor, said, your body is supposed to be the paradise of God. He created the paradise for Adam and Eve, for humanity, for human being, and he creates us for himself as his paradise. That's why he rested in us. He loved to walk with Adam. Okay, seven part. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to go into the detail of the, um, the, the deeper level, but now, now, please have a seat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So now, what we're going to do is this. We use the name of the Lord, not in vain. Instead of using the name, oh my God, okay, God bless you. Instead of saying that, oh, oh Jesus, not that. We're going to call in consciously, being aware of the presence of God. <coughs> when I call you, your name, I call, okay, Marilda or Olivia, I call you. Huh? So I say, Jesus, I really call him, he's present. I mean it. So when I breathe in, Imagine the name of the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, is coming down. Now, 
coming down from heaven. Jesus, like the ball fire coming down. Jesus. It is not just mere saying, but I'm really summoning the Almighty God, the name in my body, incarnate in my body. Jesus to the tip of my toe. Incarnation. Jesus, and hold on to your breath, right there, pause, hold on, and then conversion, okay, transformation, the name of Jesus is converted into mercy, and breathe out, mercy, through your nose, okay, you breathe in, breathe in the name of Jesus to your toe, and breathe out, mercy, to your nose, okay, first step, breathe in, and then you say Jesus, and then you pause, okay? And then you breathe out, and you say mercy, and then you pause, okay? Breathe in, Jesus, to your toe, and then you breathe out, mercy, through your nose. That pause is an emptying pause, okay? Breathe in. Jesus to your toe, that pause is a holding on pause. And breathe out, say mercy through your nose, pause, emptying yourself. Very simple. Suppose you keep doing this all day long, all night long, anytime, anywhere, any place, what's going to happen to us? All your life you just keep calling the name of the Lord, and be merciful. What's going to happen? I would say this is a free ticket into paradise, into heaven, isn't it? But before we enter into paradise, paradise already entered into us. Because Jesus is our heaven. Wherever there is Jesus, there is heaven. Why do we, uh, why, why do we have to wait until we die to go to heaven? Why don't we just have heaven in us right now? Just like receiving the Holy Eucharist in a spiritual way receiving the name of Jesus. So, all kind of addictions, all kind of problems, all kind, whatever problem you have in your life, family, health, whatever, cancer. Imagine if you have cancer and you know where the cancer is, or you don't know where the cancer is, you just breathe in the name of Jesus to that place, that cancer. And let Him take over that cancer. Let Him burn up that, burn up that cancer and breathe out mercy. And when you see something that is so uh, so upsetting, and you know you're feeling upset. Breathe in, Jesus, do that feeling of upsetting, okay? Breathe in, Jesus, there, and breathe out, mercy. Okay? It's simple. You can use this anywhere, anytime. So simple. No need to go and study all those uh, self-help, you know, psychology no, books. No need. The name of Jesus is good enough. You have problem teaching your children, they don't listen to you. Breathe in Jesus to them. Okay? Throw Jesus' name to them, but you breathe into yourself and you breathe out of mercy. You bless them, the ultimate blessing. And you're going to be okay. That's why I call it okay technology, because everybody can say okay. As long as you can say okay, you are okay. As long as I can say okay, I am okay. It is a matter of choice, free will. Oh, I have a habit of talking a lot or bickering or blaming or excusing myself or maybe lying. I know I'm lying, but I cannot, I cannot stop it. Breathe in. Jesus, to that habit of lying without mercy. So that name of Jesus will replace all those bad habits. Now, sickness, weakness, anything, it helps. And we can teach people to do this. And this is a healing, true healing for us in the spirit, in the soul, in the mind, and the body. Now, once again, the makeup of the, 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 the human person, I divide into three parts. Okay? You have body, mind, and spirit, or our soul. Body, mind, and spirit. Okay? In our body, there are three levels. You have the carnal, you have the sensual, and you have the emotional. Carnal, sensual, and emotional. Okay. Carnal is the flesh. St. Paul said that. You're living in the flesh. He, he wrote to the Corinthians, 
your fleshly, pe fleshly people. So I speak in spiritual language you cannot understand. Okay? So the flesh. And the flesh has its own logic or reasoning. It will follow it. And people say it's scientific. Really, there's a reason for the flesh. And it, you know those who are addicted to the flesh, okay, you know they will argue or they will reason according to the flesh. And if you say something spiritual, they cannot understand you. Or you say something intellectual, they cannot understand you. So you have the carnal and then the sensual. Uh, uh, you know, we grow up a little bit from the fresh and eating and, and pleasure, all those pleasure, and grow up a little bit. And we, have, uh, we, got, we, we attain a kind of a better, better taste. Uh, the senses, I like to see, you know, hear and see something beautiful, hear something sweet. And we follow that pleasure, that delight of the senses, sensual. Okay? And that level also has its own logic, its own science. Okay? I'm not saying these are bad or evil at all, but when we are addicted to it, we worship it and we stay there, we are in be trouble. And then we have emotional, emotion, you know, the explosion, the emotion, it's just the, you know, the, the moving, okay? the motion of <coughs> the carnal, the motion of the sensual, exploding, okay? emotional, anger. Okay? anxiety, fear, envy, all those emotions negative, but also we have the other emotions, like gladness, like joy, it's more than emotion. Okay? Sadness in emotion, you, people stay there a lot, many cultures would stay in a certain, within certain emotion. Some culture, uh, they build a culture on the emotion of anger, you know that. I'll give you an example. If you go to Italy, I'm not talking bad about the Italians, okay? <laughs> but they can do this. They talk to your face, and they're sweating, sweating and sweating, and they're, okay, let's drink wine, and then we're all right. <laughs> uh, I live with uh, my, my friends, okay? They're angry, angry, talking like they, they, they scream at each other in the face. Everybody just screaming, just like, and uh, the American would not, could not understand what they're doing. <laughs> and then so, when, when they talk and they, they talk face to face like this. Is it true? Yeah, right? Like this. Lie. I'm sorry. So that's a very, you know, just, you know, uncomfortable when, when you go face to face. Huh? And it's, it's very passionate, you could say that, but the whole culture is created, is based on this passion. And that's a lot of artists that have musicians and like imagine Dante is there, Michelangelo, the passionate people. You know, the whole culture? Yeah. You see that? So and you have the other culture. They have willpower. You you look at the Japanese the culture, Japanese culture, and it used to be this: if I cannot get my